Okay, this is an important exercise in that it utilizes layer masks and the advantage of using layer masks as with <coughs> um, many parts of, of Photoshop is that they're non-destructive, meaning that you can allow certain parts of your image to be revealed and you can hide other parts, but it doesn't destroy your original image. You're actually, the only thing that you're working on is a mask that allows certain parts to show through and it hides other parts. That's the most important part of this exercise. Um, this is what it looks like when it's done. And what they have added here is they've shown you how to <coughs> mask certain areas to reveal um, a photograph that shows through a window. And there's one way of doing that there. There's another way that we're going to create a mask to reveal just the Buddha. <coughs> and to hide the background of that photograph. We're also going to use text as a mask as well, which can be very effective. Um, you'll notice the texture of the text, that it looks like the paper. Um, I don't, if we look at Zen here, let me unlock it. Let me go ahead and select the C tool. We, you know, change this you now to the the garden. Notice that the text, that the texture underneath is still revealed. Um, you can put any kind of texture. The texture could be this photograph. It happens to be a texture of the paper that we're using. Okay, in this particular. So there's three principal things that it wants to show through. It, um, to demonstrate. In addition to that, it does apply some. Um, layer effects, and that's where you get this little texture in the background here, and how we apply that, as well as kind of a watercolor effect that goes on behind here, and it affects that photograph. So there's a couple of other effects that they're applying as well, and you can see those over here, as well as a drop shadow. There's some other nice things. Okay, so <coughs> let me zoom out and put this to the side. And let's see what I can do here. Um, you can see we have lots of layers here. Some are revealed, some are not. If I turn that off, you can see we're going to put this on in the background and make in, the, in a minute and make that visible. We also have at the bottom here, <coughs> this is that screen that they've created for us, and we're going to block out the blue and allow some of that to show through, so you can, it's like an open window, but we're not going to damage the original photograph in the process. So let's turn these back on. <coughs> let's start by selecting the Buddha. And the way I choose to do it, we need to make sure that we have that layer selected, number one. Does everybody know when you select layers, if you want to turn all the other layers off, if you hold down the Option key and you click on the eye icon, that turns them all off. And when you hold down the Option key and you click again, it turns them all back on. So you can select specific layers and turn them on and turn them off when you do that. If I only wanted to see the background layer, hold down the Option key and click. Notice that it reveals that layer and it hides all the rest. Hold down the Option key and click again and it turns it back on. Okay, <coughs> now, in C up to CS3 we had something called a Quick Mask tool and it's down here in CS4, I believe it's gone. In fact, I'm sure it's gone. But I will show you how to use it anyway, since that's what I'm using is CS3. <coughs> it doesn't hurt to learn it because even in CS4, you're not going to have the quick mask, but you are going to work and paint on masks in order to get the same effect. So to do that, we need to make sure that we have the right layers selected and we have channels visible. And right now, this is in CMYK. So we have the composite, and we have the individual cyan, magenta, yellow, and black channels. I'm going to start by using the smart selection tool to begin selecting the Buddha. And I, as I click and I drag, it does a pretty good job. And I can hold down the shift key, and I'll continue to add to the selection. But as you can see, it's selecting parts of the background that over here that I really don't want. <coughs> It also is part of the ear is missing here. 
Let's go ahead and select this behind here. Oh, yeah, see it's selecting way more than what I want. But it's not bad. So by using the smart selection tool, we're in the ballpark. We have close to what we need. To get a sense of what that selection looks like in on a almost on a, in a, a, a mask kind of format, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select down here and select the quick mask. And notice what it does. <coughs> we can see what's selected here and what isn't. And you'll see that parts of the Buddha's head are selected and we don't want them selected and vice versa. There's parts that are out here that aren't selected and we do want them selected. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in on individual parts and begin to paint in here. And this is just another way of selecting parts of an image. <coughs> to paint, you select a brush. My recommendation is that you select a nice hard brush, not a soft one. And when you move over here, you can see the size of the brush. And then when you paint on this quick mask, notice the quick mask down here in my channels, um, you only paint with black or white or gray. If I paint with black, I gotta make sure that I have opacity set to 100%. Notice that it's adding to that mask. If I flip and I paint with white, notice how it erases it. So you can paint back and forth now. And as I paint, and as I change my selection, it will be reflected over here in the quick mask, albeit it's pretty small and you really can't see it. So I'm gonna go back and flip so that I'm painting, and I'm gonna go ahead and pretty try to do this pretty quickly in here and try to be a as accurate as I can to paint this selection. And if you have to make the brush smaller, whoops, see how I slipped, but I'll come back with white and paint that back out. If I need to make a smaller brush, you hit the bracket tool, the left bracket tool, <coughs> and that will make it smaller on the fly. You hit the right bracket tool, and it makes it larger on the fly. So you don't have to go back up and continually change the size of the brush. So I'm trying to come back in here and paint and make a relatively good mask. It's not going to be perfect for our purposes, for demonstration purposes. Let me flip back to white and now I'll paint that back out. And I'll come back over here and see on how I'm erasing part of that mask from the Buddha's head. And I'm just painting. And you can be pretty accurate with this <coughs> if you take the time. <coughs> Trying to erase all of this, parts that I don't need. And I'll go back and flip again and add parts that I want. Okay. Pull down the space bar, and come down here. Okay, let me flip again so that I'm adding back to the mask. I have some over here I need to add. sure there's going to be parts that I'm missing here that I forget about. <coughs> It'll take me just a few moments to get this fixed. <coughs> um, the next step, at least um, one that I prefer to do in here, is that when it takes a fair amount of time to create a selection, I want to make sure that that selection is saved when I'm done. And I want to make sure that everybody knows how to do that. There's a couple of ways of doing that, but I'll show you the easiest and the safest way. Save the selection. So I'm painting this. So 
I'm not painting on the image, I'm painting on a mask. That's important to understand. Um, this, this red mask is taken from um, back in the day, before computers, when um, I guess they were called strippers, um, not the kind at the bars near the airport, <coughs> guys that worked for printers. Um, what they would do is that when you wanted something printed and you wanted parts of the image to be masked, they would put what is called a ruby lift on top and it was a transparent plastic and they would carefully cut and create these masks by hand. So now we're just doing every, all of this stuff digitally. <coughs> Let me zoom back out. Now when I turn the quick mask off, watch what happens. Notice how my selection has changed. Now if I continue to go back and I click on here and I continue to paint, I can continue to refine the selection if I so choose. I can also change the color of that. The ruby lift color is there by default, but when you click on this, I can change this to a green, to a blue, to whatever color you think might work. You can also change the opacity. You can determine whether you want the areas to be, ma the masked areas to be in red or the selected areas. And by the default settings, I think, are just fine. Now I'm ready to save the selection so that I don't have to go back and to make this again. Because <coughs> notice that my quick mask is gone here. So now I go to select, the select menu, and I select save selection. And we'll name it Buddha. Okay, as a new channel. And now this is saved. And when I deselect, Command D for deselect or move outside and click on it and it deselects. I can bring the selection back anytime I want. I can either go to the select menu and select load selection. Select here, here's the Buddha. And I can reload it from there. <coughs> or I can select the, um, the icon and I can double click on that and notice that it reveals the mask and I can actually paint on this if I want. I can come back with black and white and I can refine this mask a little bit. So I'm just looking at it in black and white. See, it's not perfect. It's a little strange here. And the parts that are black are the parts that are hidden. The white parts are actually transparent and those are the parts that are revealed. <coughs> I can also take this and I can drag it down here on this little button right here. It's the first one. And that turns that into a selection. More important, what we're going to do now is I'm going to switch back to layers and I want to turn this into <coughs> a layer mask. And what it will do is it will digitally cut out all of this background and leave just the Buddha. So with the, that layer selected, we select the second one here, this little button right here, and it says add layer mask. When I click on that, notice what it does. It cuts out the background, reveals that background, that, we, that background photograph that we had, and, but you'll also notice on the layers that the mask appears to the right and the image appears to the left, and in between the two, there's a little chain which means that they are linked. So if I move one element, they both move. If I move the Buddha, the mask moves as well. But I can, if I so choose, unlink those if I wish. I can click here, they unlink them. Now if I select the mask, and you can see it's sort of highlighted, and I move and I click and I drag, notice that I'm moving the mask around. The Buddha stays put, the ma but the mask is being moved. So it, it goes to show the flexibility and the non-destructive properties of this. If I select, on the other hand, the, the image of the Buddha and I move it, notice that the image is moving, but the mask is staying put. Command Z to undo, and I'm gonna click in the middle again and make sure that that chain or that link appears so that they're connected to one another. <coughs> if you need to go back and edit the mask for any, <coughs> any reason, we can always do that. We can go back to channels, okay? And you'll notice that we have Buddha mask. Now by turning it into, I actually duplicated it. 
because by saving the selection, I saved it as Buddha. By converting that selection into a layer mask, it did it again. So I really don't need both. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, delete this one. But if you don't use a layer mask and you want to save a selection, that would be how you would do it. When you create a layer mask, it automatically saves that selection and creates a ch an additional channel here, okay, which can be edited at any time. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to bring in the other part over here. We're going to, let's go back to layers, and I want to turn on this background image and reveal the... Um, Okay, if I hold down the Option key and I click here, okay, I want to reveal this part here so that this is transparent. And we're going to use a, 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 a means that's similar to this but a little different. We're going to still use channels. <coughs> and with that layer selected, you'll notice that just the screen is selected. You see these? If I turn them off or turn them, okay. See how each of the individual cyan, magenta, yellow, and black are visible? These are the, the individual channels that make up, that when they're composited, com comprise the entire color image. The reason we're using this, and it's used pretty frequently, is you'll notice that the cyan of all of these channels has because they intentionally did this for the demonstration purpose, is that the blue screen shows up the most. This is going to serve as our mask in a minute, and we're going to get rid of all of this other stuff here. Okay, so this is how you do it. We're going to go ahead and select the cyan channel, ch channel first because it, it, the black in here where the screen is, which actually is in the blue, is the area that we need. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to go ahead and come down here and notice that it makes a copy of it. <coughs> now what I can do is that I can use layer levels to remove all of the rest of this stuff and leave the black. So with this layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command L for, 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 for levels. And notice that by changing this, I want that there. Let's see here. I want to make sure I have this. I'm going to go back and res reset this. And I'm going to try this again. I'm going to come back here. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Let's go ahead and... I'm having a hard time with this. I don't know why. I want to make sure that the screen is really black, but at the same time, um, I want to get rid of all the others. So I'm going to click OK here for a minute. And I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to go back up here to <coughs> Image Adjustments, and I'm going to try, um, let's try Curves for a minute. See if I have any better luck. Didn't want that. Let me go back. You know what? I'm going to go back again and use levels. I'm going to try this one more time. More than one more time, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead again. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take this. No. Okay. Let's take this one. Let's remove this. There we go. I can use this tool here to extract this little eyedropper over here to extract a whole bunch of the white or the, the, uh, the colors that we don't need. And then I can come back in here, darken that up a little bit, 
left here. Let's extract this a little bit more. Try to get all of that out of there. Oops. There we go. Okay. So I've got that removed. I'm going to click OK one more time. Command L for levels. Let's try to pump this up even more. I want these little windows here to be really, really black, and I don't want anything over here. I guess if I really have to, I can come back and I can, with my brush tool, I can paint some of this out. So let's go ahead and make sure that I have my black and white here. There we go. Close enough. That works pretty good. So I'm ready to go back to layers in a minute <coughs> and make sure that all of these are selected. And what I'm going to do with this <coughs> is I'm going to turn this into a, um, a layer selection. So I can go ahead and select this like so. Notice that it just selects that area. That's the area that I want to knock out. Let's go back to layers. And now with the garden selected, notice that I want to reveal the garden in here. So let's turn this on. So I have this layer turned on. And now what I'll do is I'm going to select again the add layer mask. And that's not what I wanted. I want it to reverse it. So let me undo that. I'm going to go select inverse. And I'll select this again and we'll layer mask. And there we go. So now I've revealed through that. And I haven't you know, ruined the image at all. I can turn this back on, and that fixes that. I can turn the Buddha back on, and it fixes that. So now we're ready to add some more masks and to add some more features to this. If I want, I can select. Um, I'm going to add the uh, effects to these layers a little bit later. later. But what I want to do now is you'll notice um, in the background here, it might be easier if I turn the Buddha off and I turn these off. This is a hard edge, right? Well, what if I want to create a nice soft edge? Well, I can do that again by using channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select channels again, and I'm going to create a brand new <coughs> layer here. Now, why did it do that? Oh, I know why. Okay, never mind. Um, let's go back again and make sure that I have just the layer that I want selected. I just want the writing mask selected. There's a couple of ways that I can do this. Um, I'm going to prefer, I'm going to create another selection mask again. And I can do this from directly from here, or, or layer mask. So I'll click here and notice it doesn't change anything. I see just it looks like a white sheet of paper over here. But what I can do is now I can select the over to the left. Um, I can select our gradient tool and I can either fill from black to white or um, black to um, transparent excuse me transparent. <coughs> and while I have the um, writing layer clicked and selected <coughs> or the um, the mask selected. Now watch what happens when I move the gradient over. <coughs> I hold down the shift key. Nothing. Not a darn thing. Hold on. Let me flip from. There we go. Make sure we go from black to white. Now I have a radial gradient. Notice how it's feathering part of that out. Okay, I need to pay more attention. I want a linear gradient. Click and drag. Hold down the shift key. Notice how it feathers it off. Feathers it out. So instead of having a hard edge, I have a nice soft edge here. Pretty nice. Um, and again, why this is nice is because I have not destructed, in, in a non-destructive way, I've affected the image here. <coughs> if I choose to throw this away, and let me unlink these first, and throw this away, come on, don't crash, don't crash. I'll go ahead and just delete. Notice how the image comes back. The only part that I eliminated was the mask. So it, the, um, 
image that I dealt with is just fine. I haven't destroyed it in any way. So in three different ways now, I've used channels and I've used layer masks to alter my image. And in doing so, it's been in a non-destructive way. Very nice. The next thing that they want us to do in here is to add some effects to our image. Um, if I select, let's see, let's select this part of the image. One of the things that we can do, because if I add a filter right now <coughs> to this and we apply, let's see here. Uh, why aren't my, let me make sure that my image is selected. Let's go to filter. And why don't I have artistic? I think the safest way to do this these days so that I can edit this continually and in an undestructive way is that I want to select this layer and I want to convert for a smart object. Another safe thing to do might be to make a copy of it too and turn off the copy. So I've selected this and I'll go to layer. I've turned off the, the duplicate of it and what I want to do is create a smart mask here. So I'm going to go to filter, um, convert for smart filters. So I'm going to convert this to enable it's going to convert the layer into a smart object. And when it does that, notice that that gradient mask goes away, or that the, the layer mask goes away. That's not good, um, because now I have altered that permanently. That's why I chose to make a copy of the layer first, in case I decide, you know what, what I don't like here, I need to go back and edit it again. Maybe I want the gradient to go farther across. Maybe I don't want it to go quite as far. Who knows what I want. Maybe I don't want the gradient at all. I want a hard edge now. I've changed my mind. So I could throw this smart object away and go back to my original image that, I had, um, that I've left intact. So now I can select the writing object <coughs> or the writing layer that is a smart layer. Go to filter and come on, why won't you do this for me now? And let's add a layer. No, I don't want from there. Oh, I know why. I'm going to go to image mode. And some of you may discover this, that some of the filters are only available in RGB, not in CMYK. So I'm going to go to image mode, and I'm going to switch from CMYK to RGB. Don't rasterize. Don't flatten. Okay, so now I'm back in RGB, and now when I select the filter, notice that they're all available. Um, we can come down here to texture. Um, I think one of them is the mosaic tiles. That's the one that we're going to apply to this one. And I click OK. I'm just going to leave the default settings. See how it's applied it? And, uh, and it feathers out nicely because it was applied to that mask. Also notice, too, that in, in layers that we have smart filler, filters that we can turn off, turn back on. We can also double click on mosaic tiles and we can bring that back up and we can edit it. So by using smart objects, we can continue to edit it without destroying the object. Notice I'm, uh, I'm emphasizing every time that we do something here that we don't destroy the original image. So now I've applied a filter to that. It kind of punches it up a little bit. I can do the same with the, um, the background here that's being masked. And again, to be on the safe side, I'm going to go to Filter. And I can apply Artistic again. But if I apply it here, watch this. If I go ahead and I apply Watercolor, <coughs> it will apply it to this. And I click OK. Notice the difference between using smart objects and applying it directly to the, to the object. I have destroyed the object now. The only way I can undo that filter is right now. Hit Command Z, or I can go back in my history. As soon as I've saved this, it's no longer 
editable. That's why I would prefer to hit Command-Z now, make a duplicate of this layer, turn off the duplicate so that I can always go back and edit it, take this layer, my original one here, and I'm going to go to Filter, and what I want to do is convert for Smart Filters. Okay, now when I apply the filter, and I'll go back down here to, what was it? Artistic, let's go ahead and I'm, I'm gonna apply the watercolor one again. Looks pretty good. Notice that this watercolor filter now, because it was applied to a smart object, is editable. Now this is a little bit different than the way the book has done it. It doesn't tell you to make copies. I do that out of practice. Now with CS4, when you apply these filters, um, they should be editable, continually editable. I don't think you need to convert to a smart object anymore, which is kind of nice. Okay, so now we have a couple of other features. I need to <coughs> increase the size of my document without distorting it. There's something that we haven't done yet. <coughs> And that is that we can actually change the canvas size. Um, it's pretty nice. It's, it's different than resizing the image. When you resize the cam canvas, you're actually resizing the background of the document. It's, it's like saying, you know what, I started to work on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, but I realized later on I really should have been drawing on 11 by 17 sheet of paper. Well, in tradi with traditional media, what would you have to do? You'd have to start all over again, wouldn't you? You have the option in the digital world of actually increasing or decreasing the paper size anytime you wish. To do that, I go to image and I select instead of image size, I select canvas size. Now you'll notice a widget down here. And this tells me when I change the dimensions where it's going to add or remove the paper. If I leave it in the center, whatever dimensions I add to this, if I change, leave the width the same, and I change the height to, let's change it to 10 inches. It will add five inches to the top and five inches to the bottom. If I select the bottom widget, notice that it's only gonna add 10 inches to the top, or add those additional inches to the top. If whichever one I click, you'll notice that it shows you what direction the, um, the additional canvas, canvas will be added. I only want it to be added to, uh, evenly to the top and the bottom. I click OK. Now it will add, and notice if, when I zoom out here, that I have added to the top and the bottom. Okay? And it's changed all of my layers, and it will change all of my um, channels accordingly as well. So now what I can do <coughs> to work on the next part of this exercise is to bring in these sample background pieces. And before I do, what I want to do is I want to retain this nice soft torn edge. And this is something that's been removed from CS4 as well. Why? I don't know. But um, if you have both available you might want to use this from time to time. Um, it was originally, it's called the extract tool, and it was originally used for, um, or de designed to, particularly when you wanted to create a nice soft um, selection around hair, or around fur, um, things like that that are very detailed, that have soft, frizzy edges. Well, that's what we're doing here. You have a nice soft edge, and to try to go around that edge with any of the tools that we've used so far and make a selection ends up being a hard edge, doesn't it? Well, that's not what we want. So instead what I'm gonna do <coughs> is I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to select the extract tool. A separate application opens up when you do that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to select the marker tool and I can adjust the size of the brush from here and I'm going to define the edges. And what you want to do is not paint on the inside or the outside, but right on the edge itself. So you have a little bit inside, a little bit outside. 
Does that make sense? And I kind of slipped here. Okay, so what I can do is I can select the eraser tool and I can go back and erase part of this. Now, <coughs> how this program works is that we need to use a fill bucket. And where you fill is the area that you want to keep. And now what the program does when you click preview is it takes all of the colors that it finds in that filled area, it compares them with the part that you've outlined with that marker. The part that looks the same as what it sees in here, it keeps, and the part that it finds is different, it throws away. So now when I click preview, you'll notice that it keeps that nice soft fuzzy edge down here. It's not a hard edge. It even maintains some of the transparency down here. You know, when you tear parts of the paper, you see a little bit of that transparency. Pretty cool. So now I'll just click OK. And this does change the image pretty dramatically. So I've maintained that. Now I can combine this, combine these images. So I'll go ahead and use a V for move. And I'll move it over. And make sure, and I'm not paying attention here. Make sure that I move this up so that it's at the top. And that this covers like so. Now I have a nice soft fuzzy edge. What I can also do now is use the same image for the bottom. Probably what I want to do first though is it wants us to invert this so it turns into a purplish color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select image adjustments and select invert. And it turns it, no oh, that's not what I wanted. It turns it into Let's look at the one that they have. They turn it into a purple. Wonder why I did that. Usually they use invert. Well, we can also try our different mode selections and that would affect it too. We can select multiply with that layer. Let's make sure that that's selected. Let's try darken. Nope, don't want that. Let's try difference. No, it still turns it out. Turns out to be kind of a bluish color, doesn't it? Hmm. Um. <laughs> Try multiply. Nope. 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 Color burn, overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light. All these do something slightly different. Difference, that's what I did a moment ago, didn't I? I did, and that's not helping me. Hue, that doesn't help me. Luminosity, nope. Color, nope. If I try enough of them, that should work, huh? Exclusion, difference, hard mix. And you know what? This isn't what you want to do. I don't know why it's doing this. It should be just the reverse. Maybe because I need to switch back to CMYK. What I could also do is um, change hue saturation, use color balance. So I could come from here. If I only wanted this layer changed, <coughs> we can go to um, select, or I'm sorry, layer. What we're going to do is add a new adjustment layer, and I'm going to try um, use saturation. And what I want it to do is I want to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. And now when I use this, I can go back in here and I can change the hue. Pretty cool. And by doing this, Let's go back. Come on, where's purple? Purple. By doing it this way, I can always go back and I can change the color of it. I'm not, again, it's another non-destructive way of making this work. 
So now what I need to do is duplicate both of these. I'm going to start by duplicating the top layer and moving it below. But I want the fuzzy edge not at the bottom, but I want it at the top. So let me go ahead and duplicate this layer by clicking and dragging here. Okay. Here's the copy. I'm going to move it down here. Let's move it below like so. And this one I kind of goofed. Why is that? Yeah, that's linked to that. Let me undo. Let me go back to window history and try this again. Okay, so make sure I have the correct layer selected. Let's go ahead and duplicate the layer. Why it changed the other stuff beneath it, I don't know. Because it's affecting everything below it, and it shouldn't. Huh? Yeah, I just want to duplicate it. And, um, huh? Well, if I take this now and move it down, this is what I want to do eventually. I want to take this and flip it. So if I take that layer and I go to image or edit <coughs> and I say transform, I can flip horizontal and flip vertical. So if I flip the, the, the I didn't want that one. I'm going to go image, uh, sorry, edit, transform, I want to flip vertical. There we go. So see now, uh, it just flipped the whole image. The problem that I have though, is that this now, I could just throw this away. I mean, that would take care of that. I'm not quite sure why, but here, oh, I know why, here, if I do that, no. That's okay, yeah, that works, okay. Now I'll come down here and I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to move this down here. And to make this layer affect only that one, I hold down the Option key. And I move in between the two layers and I click and notice how it's only affecting that one. But why it actually went away, I don't know when I duplicated it. That's kind of weird. Um, really what I want to do too, and now it gets even more complicated, is that if we look at the final piece, let's hide this. Okay, remember how I said the garden, this text, is using that background image, that image of paper is a mask, or actually the text is a mask. And it's masking the rest of the paper and allowing only parts of it to be revealed through the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up again. And I'm going to bring this at the top here. I'm going to bring another copy of this over. Move this to the top. There we go. And I don't want multiply. I just want normal. There we go. Okay. And now on top of this, I'm going to create some text. And I'll do it centered. And I have Minion Pro. And I'll call it Zen Garden. And it really doesn't matter in here what color the text is. Doesn't matter whether it's green, blue, black, it's it's unimportant because what I'm gonna do is move this beneath the now, the paper, and this layer is going to become a mask. So when I hold down the option key and I click, notice that the text is serving as a mask. And now when I move the the text on here, it's using that piece of paper as a texture inside it. Does that make sense? 
so that I'm using the color. It could be a photograph, I mean, this is a photograph of paper, but it could be a photograph of a person. And you only want that person to be revealed inside the text. You know, wherever the text is, that's where you want that photo to be revealed. So what's happening is that you're using the text as a layer mask. To do that, the text needs to be whatever it, underneath whatever layer it is that you're wanting to mask. You move the cursor between the two layers and hold down the option key. Notice the double, we have a, an arrow that's pointing to the left, and then we have a black circle and a gray circle beneath it. Notice how the icon changes when you move over those two. If I click again, now notice it's just two individual layers. <coughs> if I want the layer beneath, meaning the text layer, to serve as a layer mask, you hold down the option key and move between the two layers and click and notice now it masks and it, it covers up all the rest of the paper. To show you what else you can do, um, it wouldn't hurt, excuse me, to bring in another image. <coughs> Let me open a separate image just, just to show you that we can um, use anything as a mask here. And then the same, we do the same for the, the text below and then what we're going to do here make sure that the text layer is selected. We're going to apply an effects layer and we're going to apply um, a drop shadow. Notice how the drop shadow is applied to that layer. We can control the distance. We can control the direction of the shadow. We can control the spread. So all the features that we could apply to text we can still do, but the only thing that's revealed inside the text is that is that piece of paper, that texture that we've used. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this back out. And instead of the paper, I'm going to use some other image in here. <coughs> let's click from here, in fact, and let's duplicate something in here. Um, Oh, I messed part of that up again on mine, huh? Um, what happened here? This needs to be reset. There we go. Um, okay, let's go back in here. I'm going to take this background image here, this one right here. Let's lock these two together. And I'm going to drag it over with that layer selected. So I have my layer, and let's say, for example, I only want that tea house to be revealed inside the text. So let's move this down. The text layer is beneath it. Hold down the option key, move in between, and I click, and notice how that picture is revealed only inside the text. Now, the, the picture doesn't extend all the way across the text. That's something that you need to make sure that you do. But notice how that will work for almost anything. You can create some really interesting, especially with text, you can create some especially interesting looks and styles by using, we have a number of CDs here, photo CDs, <coughs> of textures of steel, you know, rusted steel, um, of, um, you know, various metal surfaces and painted surfaces and worn surfaces and woods and stuff. And if you want that text to look like those surfaces, um, you don't need to go through a lot of fancy um, strategies to do it. Just use the text as a, a layer mask. And remember, all of this text is, is it continues to be editable. Make sure that you select the text layer, click the text tool, highlight it, if we want to call it my garden. Okay, text is edible. I can go back and I can change the font. I can do whatever I want with it. And if I want to remove the mask, you go back and move in between the layers, hold down the option key and click. And now it's revealed as just two separate layers again. See everybody see how that works? Are there any of these tools that you want me to, to go over again? And it's going to be difficult for those of you who have CS4 on your machines that some things have changed. Um, as I said, the extract tool is gone. The quick mask tool is gone. This is the way it was done. 
in CS3, and it's revised a little bit now and done a little bit differently in CS4. Still have all the same features available to you, but it's just done a little bit differently. And most of what they have now available in CS4 is they will have masks and a panel over to the right here that's always th that are always there. And you will work from that panel in order to achieve many of the things that we've done here. Okay, by using layers and that sort of thing, it's done a little bit. I won't say it's more intuitively. It's again, it's keeping in mind that they want to make everything as flexible as possible. They want to make sure that everything um, is non-destructive. Okay, so that's this next exercise. So work on exercises today for the remainder of today and or um, work on your postcard assignment. If you have questions about that, please let me know. And for the advanced guys, you guys are doing the adva invisible man assignment, right? Sort of? Okay. If you feel more comfortable doing the postcard assignment, then do that. Okie doke.